there are things that we need to be healed from not just physically but emotionally and be delivered from because many times what happens is that we go through life and we go through life we loving Jesus but there are some bad habits and responses that keep happening over and over and over again but what's keeping many of us back what's keeping many of us back is a spirit of rejection that affects us when people talk to us we read into everything a negative about ourselves it's keeping us back from furthering the gospel somebody just have to say something and you naturally think they don't like you they think the worst it's happening in families it's happening in individual lives it's happening in marriages and you say well no it's not happening to me well listen when somebody says anything to you that's negative note your reaction you might you might not say anything but inside of you sinks and you're thinking of what they said for the whole night and day and night and day you understand what i'm saying and nothing anybody could tell you could make you feel different you say you know what that person don't like me or yeah they're telling me that because i deserve for them to tell me that the spirit of rejection has always been one of the greatest enemies of mankind it is one of those strong men that has armor it does not just simply just spirit of rejection go because there's armor you've got to understand what this thing it's 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 like it's like what you call one of those octopus with those tentacles that that weave itself around deep into our soul and sometimes rejection starts from in the womb if a parent has rejected a child not wanted a child it's given an open doorway to that spirit coming in and then as life goes on there are things that happen that reinforce rejection i want you to know the saints of god do not understand their identity in christ because while they are saying oh yes i'm the apple of his eye i'm a branch of the true vine i'm adopted etc etc they, 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 they are not believing that they are accepted because you're talking identity but you're talking rejection because you don't really believe that you're rich you are accepted you're not walking in rejection we don't even understand what that means but it takes away from the kind of power that we are called to walk in because Christ has given us authority obedience brings the power but many times we are not being obedient because we're spending more time thinking about the many ways we've been rejected and how nobody likes us and we have no role in the church because others are better than I am I want you to know that rejection has intimidated the born again believer the ugliness of rejection keeps a born again believer from functioning in their God given destiny in such a great way that the word of God specifically says in Isaiah 53 1 to 5 that Jesus took it to the cross to bring about its defeat and its demise many of us we see life through rejection we see life through hurt we see life and receive correction through those glasses too Isaiah 53:1-5 says who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground he has no form no comeliness and when we shall see him there's no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected 
of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. First of all, I want you to know that the description of how he looked, despised, you could reject someone, but once they understand who they are and whose they are, and they understand that Christ accepts them, they will not accept your rejection. Christ was rejected but did not accept the rejection. He walked in that acceptance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People can reject you, but unless you receive that rejection and believe, you will walk understanding your identity hasn't changed because someone else has said the total opposite to what you know God says. Who you are is who God says you are not who others say you are and I need us to understand this because the great exchange was executed he was rejected he experienced rejection remember he didn't sin but he took the sin of the world upon his shoulders so he experienced rejection that we might be accepted So when we don't understand that rejection has been sent to cause us to doubt it is finished, we will understand why it is such a big weapon of Satan against us. If you constantly find yourself feeling rejected you need help to get help to come out of that pit because you are preventing yourself from walking in the victory for which Christ died to give you and it's time as Christians we don't settle for what the devil wants to us to believe and sometimes he will use people who have not yet learned to love unconditionally you all know it's just they don't know how to love. It's okay. They will learn. We, were, we weren't there. Some of us still are not there. You know, there's always this big drama on Facebook and who don't love who. And listen to me, y'all. Don't get caught in that. We are still learning to love. So if somebody mash your big toe and don't love you, you don't have to splash it across for everybody to know. To pray for that person because they have not able to love maturely yet. You will get to the place, but you've got to understand what this rejection is. Rejection is preventing the saints from walking in their destiny. They spend more time thinking about how they failed, or they spend more time thinking that people don't like them, or they don't fit in, than understanding in humility we walk knowing we are accepted not pridefully you know i'm a christian you know I'm, I'm accepted no listen you have to love so how you respond with what you know god has done in your life says whether you love or not ephesians 1 6 says to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved isn't that we might have missed that he has made us accepted in the beloved which is why even if maybe you go to church maybe you have had a bad experience 
too many people they leave churches because at the end of the day somebody cheated them badly y'all you weren't saved because of people it's because of Jesus Christ he did the saving and at the end of the day it's time to start saying I have been made accepted in the beloved even though there may be somebody who not accepting me you've got to change your focus because it is time for us to be the church and to answer God's call wherever we are placed as the church and there's too much time taken do yourself a favor check out Facebook and the amount of complaints where is about pastors where is about friends and those who don't love how much time we spend people will respond to you in ways that you don't like because they are not yet able to love maturely but you must know who you are and whose you are not because somebody rejects you means you accept the rejection because rejection undermines the natural God-given characteristic that causes us to long for a desire gives a, a, a there's a desire to be loved a, a desire to be cherished a desire to be appreciated for not just what we do or what we have attained for just being an individual that has been fearfully and wonderfully made in his image rejection undermines the fact that he made you in his image and likeness and nothing can change that but a word from somebody that isn't anything positive will seek to undermine the fact that you are simply loved because of who he says you are his are you understanding you see we are too quick to doubt because we really don't know really who we are and whose we are and it's important because a lot of young people and we're speaking here now about the church because we can't talk about the whole world the rejection is what one is causes them to want to be like the friends who maybe are bad influences because they want to be accepted but you've got to understand y'all we are spirit beings in a human body we must not simply allow what the world says we are we will get into trouble because we will constantly be striving to belong we will constantly be striving to perform we will constantly be striving to be accepted by those whose standard have nothing to do with the word of God see you don't have to strive as a child of God to be accepted because you are accepted because God says so he accepts you the blood of Jesus Christ has caused you to be accepted because you've said I surrender my life to you Jesus I'm a child of God you have become accepted and I need you to know that rejection is one of the major ways the enemy undermines our self-worth our self-esteem our purpose and our potential a lot of self-worth and self-esteem is undermined because of the rejection that is dished out to us and we believe once you believe you will feel and then you will begin to act on what you believe 
I'm sure that there are those of you who cannot deny that rejection from others can also lead to self-rejection. If you get enough rejection from other people, you begin to reject your own self. You begin to feel worthless. You begin to feel inferior. You begin to feel depressed. Emotional insulation. Introspection. You begin to check yourself. Is something wrong with me? How come nobody likes me? And you begin to overthink a lot of things. Fear. Intimidation. Perfectionism. Why? Because you're trying and trying and trying and trying to keep up with those who have said you need to be a certain way. Irresponsibility, guilt, and self-hatred. People who live or have lived under constant rejection may have a difficult time expressing their feelings, asserting themselves, or they go to the other extreme. The slightest thing, and they go from zero to 100 because immediately it stings, that rejection, that feeling of rejection, it stings. Sometimes they lose control of their life because they spend their life trying to be who everyone says they need to be and not who God says. Say it's of God, it is time for us if this is a problem. Not to say, oh gosh, it's true, and move on, and come back again to it. There are too many saints who do not understand. They are accepted because God says so. So when the rejection comes from people, pause and examine what exactly somebody is saying. You can accept or reject based on what they are saying. But it is a sin to accept rejection. Are you hearing me? Now some of you are going to be like, Okay, hold it right there. What people do to me, I can't help. What you accept, you can help. And if you know you accepted, you would not accept rejection. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you are stuck in that whole valley of rejection, you need discipleship counseling to deal with it. Because it's going to keep you back. Because when God says, you're the light of the world, the salt of the earth. When God says that you are his. When God says that you are the apple of his eye. You will sit there and you will be like, I don't believe it. Because my friend, by my friend's action, I feel worthless. That's the next thing. Feelings. You've got to take your emotions and submit it to the cross. When you begin to feel, it's because you've believed. It may happen as a split second. What you believe is what you feel, and what you feel is what you act on. So if you believe a lie, you're going to feel a lie, and you're going to act on a lie. So sometimes we have to take apart what exactly are we experiencing. And this is the next thing. Rejection results in a lot of self-hatred. Because if other people don't like you, you are not going to, unless you've started applying what you learn in the Word, you are not going to just sit there and, 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 and say, okay, I'm rejecting it. You will accept what they tell you. And what happens? It works against what the word says. So when you hear me saying, they gave the keys of Port of Spain to this person, we need, as the children of God, to walk in power and authority. You cannot walk in power and authority if you are walking and believing that you are rejected. Do you understand what I'm saying? It mashes up relationships. In marriages, if you marry somebody and you have not dealt with this rejection, what happens is you constantly need that husband or wife to tell you that they love you every second of every hour. 
The truth is you have not allowed the Lord to do the work in you. That you know only God could love you the way you need to be loved. If you are looking for love through somebody else, it's never. You all hear me, I'm married 43 years now. Never can he or she love you the way you need to be loved. Because he or she didn't make you. Only God knows you. Of course you could be loved. But if you keep looking for that love to complete you, it is never going to happen. It can only be through Christ. Only your understanding of being accepted. And I'm saying this to the young people. Because when you are in school and the transgender curriculum that is already out there begins to be taught in front of you and they tell you you are a he she and you're not a he if you're a he you're not a she if you're a she or something about the pronouns you understand you better know who you are to say this is who i am and then they say well we don't have nothing to do with you because you are a hater because you will not accept you will say this is who i am the word of God says, I am accepted. As a matter of fact, you may not want to say the word of God because some of you young people don't want to talk about the word of God. We understand sometimes it may seem a little bit, you know, I don't want to say it. But you see, there's a difference between speaking it and believing it. When they say to you, you are this and you are that, you need to understand there's nothing anybody could tell you to change your mind about who you are. If you really know who you are. And now is the time to get out into your spirit. Because you will begin to doubt. I was male all my life. I wonder if I really am. According to what I've been taught here today. You must know who you are. And whose you are. And that's why the churches must teach it. Because you will be sifted. And persecuted. For not coming into agreement with the world's description of identity. I want you to know that people who have lived under constant rejection may have a difficult time accepting love from others. They will always do one of two things. They will always so doubt the love that nothing somebody could tell you, you would believe. They say, I love you, and it bounces off. Or you tell yourself, I wonder what they want. And you doubt. Some of you would not have been here earlier. We were praying for that. And the thing is, this young man has been coming for weeks to receive a hamper. Months, sorry. Years? Okay. Baby over here. The thing about it is with him, when he started coming, he was like vexed, angry. Don't look at him. If you say the wrong word to him, one day, I set him straight. I said, listen, you come in here. We love you. Well, I didn't expect him to believe me. You're going to behave or you're not getting allowed to come back. Because I'm not tolerating no bad behavior inside here because he's real loud and, and everybody accustomed getting frightened. Right? The more you shout, the closer I come into you. After that, we were good friends. Okay? He had his days, but we understood that in his mind, parents reject him, everybody reject him, voices telling him he's terrible. So some days he would come peaceful. I want to believe that he's also on some kind of beds, maybe. And the next time he comes, arguing. If you look at him, don't look at me. So I'd give him a special spot to stand where he couldn't see anybody looking at him thing about it is came today 
to collect as usual. I told him, I said, you're the only person I know have a list to come for a hamper. You have your own grocery list, you understand? We make a joke about it because he's living on the streets, kind of. So he could only have certain things. Because you have to, yeah, kind of a place to cook, but not a place to cook, if you understand. So it's only certain things, right? So lovingly packs these things in a little bag for him. But today, he came in, and this was one of the days when he was literally angry. So I told him, hold on. So as I got to him, he said to me, I said the words. I said, you know we love you. And one day, my prayer is that this anger will go. Because for eternity, when we get to heaven, well, who tell me to talk about heaven? He made me to understand. I will never go to heaven. I am going to hell. I said, really? So I got louder. And I said to him, I said, well, let me tell you something. If you think, and I'm saying to you, son, if you, I'm your spiritual mother, so listen to me. If you think I'm coming every week to give you food, and I am telling you that Jesus died for you, and you're looking at me and telling me you're going to hell, you are not going to hell. Are you hearing me? You will never go to hell. I will live to see the day that you will go to heaven because I love you. And then I pause. And Jesus loves you more. But I love you. He stopped like if he got a blow to his face. And all I saw was the tears start to run down. Well, they always have somebody surrounding me to give me something. So I put my hand out and raise the tissue to give it to me. He said, I can't say nothing after that. I say, you're sure right. And for the first time, he said, keep the bag because I have to make sure I come to the service to get the bag because every week he tell me come in eh? and he don't reach. Hold on to the bag. I said, listen to me. Take your bag and come back later to this. No, 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 no. I'm leaving the bag because I'm going to come back for the bag and therefore I will come to the service. I said, okay. So I see he made his arrangement and he left his bag. He came. And I think a few of you were here. And of course, you can tell he's a little boisterous. But, but, when the time came for him, because he was taken in everything, when the time came, I said, you're not leaving here without no prayer. So come up for prayer. So he came up. And I have to tell you all, I, I wouldn't, I don't know, I, I can't tell you everything because when I'm in something, it's hard to, for me to describe. But such a burden. A couple of them came forward to help pray for him. And a kind of a prayer went forth. That you know when you know somebody for their whole life has been rejected. It's like walls and walls and walls I saw that even now the only thing he responded to remember is I love you and I can't do nothing about it that was the only thing that st stunned him and in praying for him I felt the walls the, 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 the generational iniquity that, that has been coming down that because he tell you his mother his father everybody in his life like he wished he was never born. Those are the kinds of things he would talk about. And as you prayed, it's like you were going through a barrier where there's this boy who he talks about Jesus, but he's behind that wall that the Holy Spirit alone could reach. But there was a point in time in the praying where you saw him begin to crumple 
because something was penetrating. You all hear what I'm, for those who are here to see, I don't know what you saw, but this is what I felt as if we had to go through some things that was just blocking because the number of years of rejection brought the anger and the hatred. And he crumpled and he started to weep and I held him up and at the end of the day, because the others were coming in agreement. Why am I sharing this with you all? Maybe you are not experiencing what he is experiencing. At the end, he didn't know what to do with himself. The tears were running down and he did not know where to move. Because when the power of God comes, what I felt in my soul was God he can't be left out this is years of rejection that has made him into a human that just hates people because everybody rejects him so he rejects before they could reject you understand but Christ died for him too and this is what Satan tries to do because after a while you can't see yourself any other way you're less than because everybody is more than and I told him I said Unless you come in to where God's presence is, the only way for you to begin to understand deep down in your soul that you are accepted is if you allow the Lord, the presence, the presence of God. There are some things you've got to like a piece of meat soaking in seasoning. You have to sit and marinate in God's presence. Because no amount of talk is going to make a difference. We must talk for a whole year. So this must be the 366th day. And he's finally come to church. You all hear how long it took. But here's what I want to tell you. I want you to understand that rejection could cause people to be in a prison. Isolated. Locked up not free to be who God made them to be. Hard to flow, even in the gifts of the Spirit. We can't reach there with some because they're so locked away. Hiding from the hurt. Walls go up before you could say anything. And you better not use that word love flippantly because they're not dumb. They know. If you're sincere, you know, as Christians, I love you. I love you. I love you. It's Jesus we're singing to, but we say it to each other. It will cost you to love people like that. Anybody, it will cost you to love. Because one line is not going to cut it. When he was leaving, he says, okay, he, so he's, I don't know, like he calls me different things. This wrongs was, okay, sister. I said, mother, I'm your spiritual mother. Right? Because I want him to understand that even if he was rejected by his earth parents, God has put people to love him, but God ultimately is the one who loves. If you are struggling with a loss of identity because you meet people and you want to be an extension of their personality, you take on a false personality to cope in life. It's because you've been rejected and you don't understand that acceptance. You don't have to do anything for God to accept you. Just allow him to meet you where you are at. And he will begin to change you through the power of the Holy Spirit. But you don't make yourself clean in order to be accepted by him. He accepts you regardless. Sometimes we use withdrawal. We hide away. We stop loving. We have a fear of love. Somebody love you, you're on. They have a sister there on Zoom. She knows. You could, you, listen, I'm not telling you to behave bad, eh? but you could behave as bad as you behave, I will still love you. And we will still love you and we miss you. We know you're coming out soon. I'm not calling her name. She knows who it is, right? She's suffering from a little cold right now. Because what happens is, 
A, a person who has suffered deep, deep, deep rejection and is accustomed to being rejected will begin to act out. I may as well behave bad. They'll reject me anyway. I want you to understand. I'm not going to go on for much longer. We're going to go into worship. But I need us to get this because it is keeping many of us back. There is a feeling of entrapment, no solution. I don't know what to do. And I don't know why I have these thoughts all the time, over and over and over, that I'm not good enough and, and people don't like me. And, and, and we're stuck. It brings out the worst in people. Eh? There are people, their problem is hurt and rejection. And they have started disliking people who love them. But because you only see life through hurt and rejection, you convince yourself there are many enemies that you have. Because you can't receive the love, you can't accept the love. There's also self-deception. And there's also weakness of mind and emotions, etc., etc. So I want you to know, and I'm going to begin to close in a moment and pray for you. Rejection violates the very character and heart of a person. It quickly bruises a person. If you know someone who struggles with rejection, be gentle. But don't enable. You can't enable. Sometimes you have to say, enough is enough. Stop the nonsense. But be gentle. Because where you could be told something and you're like, okay, I'm going to take it to the Lord. You understand you're accepted by God, so you're not going to fall apart. That person may not be able to accept what you're saying like that. It totally demolish them, demolishes them. We need to understand that there are demonic spirits that enter through wounds of rejection and feed on them. And there are certain types of evil spirits, particularly if there's trauma with the rejection. Like if parents reject you, there are other generational spirits of rejection. So rejection spirits work to draw rejection to you from others. So what they do is they send people, they influence people who will come around you and reject you just to reinforce the rejection. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen to me. There are parents who maybe thought they knew what they were doing and did not do what they ought to have done for us. So we grew up. I'm saying we, if I might be the only one, but I'm including myself because this was my life. So you grow up and there are parents who love you, but they did not know how to love you. What does that mean? That your whole life has gone, fallen apart? You must understand the more damage that is done, the harder it is for you to even receive from other people. You've got to make up your mind. It is time for this thing now to be dealt with. Because it's like if we have gotten comfortable with spirits of rejection. Every time somebody says something to you, rejection renames it and rephrases it. You hear it different, the words are changed, and your understanding of what it is is totally different to what the person says. Try and have a meeting with a person with that kind of stronghold. You would have to rephrase everything to make sure they don't leave hurt. Oh gosh, Olya, it's time for this thing to stop now. We need help. We need help because we cannot answer God's call walking as rejected people. I want you to know that it can cause us to live expecting rejection, unconsciously believing that you're going to be rejected, so you're hardening your heart so it doesn't hurt. You become bitter, you build walls of self-protection, you have no confidence in yourself. But what happens is, when you harden your hearts to protect yourself from people, you keep God out. There is no way to allow God in where a heart has been hardened to protect you from being hurt. Once you block out people, you are blocking out God. Earlier, let me tell earlier, 
They have some of us real spiritual. We believe that we could worship God and pray and we could put a wall up with people. There is a measure of blocking God out that you're doing that you're not aware of until that wall comes tumbling down. And then you'll realize how much more of him, how much he wanted to invade you, but you had some walls up. No, Lord, not you. It's about your people. You can't love God who is a spirit and not love your fellow man. So you can't tell me that you're accepting from God and you're rejecting man. You cannot. So we need to get some discipling for that. And last but not least, rejection affects the brain in the same way as physical wounds affect the brain. It causes a negative substance to be formed. And so... We need to understand that it's like if you transfer children from home to home, foster homes. That rejection is just like if a soldier was, was shot and lost his leg and he's suffering from PTSD. That emotional rejection from home to home, it feels just like if you have been in a war and parts of your body have been blown up. And you're suffering from the trauma of that. So we need to understand that many of us are responding to life through hurts, through wounds, through pain, and through scars. We need to be discipled so that we understand God will heal us and that we will move forward strong and victorious. People with rejection will filter life through rejection. And it brings about a dysfunction of personalities. It mashes up relationships and it affects our marriages and society. So I'm gonna pray for you now. This is just part one. There's many parts to this message, but we no longer want to go through living life through the emotion of being unliked, unaccepted. This is an emotion, eh? Unloved, undervalued, un unreceived feeling abandoned, feeling unwanted, feeling unappreciated. If you are struggling with those things, God will set you free. But you need to be aware of what you are struggling with. And there are many aspects to rejection. So I can pray for you, but it's not finished. Because there are deeper levels of rejection that we need to understand and that we need to, to overcome. To confront we must understand what it is we are dealing with so I want to pray for you now before we go into worship and if you are really struggling with it you all know the discipling appointments um, are there for you but I find that when people really get into the word and it's registered with them this emotion of rejection is demonic it is not from the Holy Spirit so when it happens you've got to confront it you may not know where it's come from but you know where God wants to take you so father I break the spirit of rejection and completely destroy it father in the mighty name of Jesus God I know we are all at different stages but Lord I pray for those who are here that they will refuse to feel or be rejected because they know that even if the world rejects them they have a God who loves them and has accepted them in the beloved in the mighty name of Jesus father that they may see beyond every form of rejection in their life because they will know that you are working together for their good in the mighty name of Jesus father bring back who they really are in Christ, oh God. What the enemy has stolen from them. Remove those things that he's deposited, that he's projected into them, that is causing them to reject themselves, that is causing them to accept rejection in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let their life, oh God, reject every spirit of rejection in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus, Father, I call them out of every satanic prison that has been caused by rejection in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I break by fire 
every curse of rejection running through the family line that overshadows their blessings father even from in the womb where there was rejection oh god father that spirit of rejection must go father we speak oh god the acceptance that comes that you have made a way in the beloved for them in jesus mighty name by the blood of jesus i cut off every spirit of rejection in their genes in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every yoke of collective rejection afflicting their life and destiny break and die in jesus mighty name father every inherited rejection that is following them that they will shake off this rejection through the power of the resurrection in the mighty name of jesus father let every spirit of rejection father that is operating in them father may that spirit of rejection father may that spirit of rejection leave and go to the dry places father may every foundation upon which their life has been built that has caused them rejection receive deliverance by fire right now in jesus mighty name through the blood of jesus father i revoke all evil decrees and verdicts of rejection that has been made against them and their family in the mighty name of jesus let every spirit of rejection and hatred that is programmed into their blood by the enemy come out and die in jesus mighty name father god of elijah rise and destroy every voice of rejection and hatred speaking louder than the voice of breakthrough in their life speaking louder than the holy spirit in jesus mighty name father every word that was spoken telling them they will never amount to anything in jesus mighty name those spirits that came in with those word curses i command those spirits begin to leave right now and go to the dry places in jesus mighty name father let every mark of rejection working against their life and destiny be consumed by fire in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of rejection and hatred that they have as a result of anyone who raised them let it be consumed by fire in jesus mighty name father Father, release them from every curse of the spirit of rejection that was placed upon them by the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Father, every parental rejection caused by the foul spirit of rejection that has put them in depression and sorrow, break and die in Jesus' mighty name. Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the Holy Spirit, I release them from every evil effect of words of rejection that are still manifest in their life in Jesus mighty name father by the blood of Jesus every word of rejection spoken against them when they were in their mother's womb I cut off those spirits of rejection right now I cancel those words in Jesus mighty name father I loose them from every foundational rejection in the mighty name of Jesus every rejection personality that has been living in their life father I command those spirits to leave and go to the dry places right now in Jesus mighty name father every spirit of rejection transferred to them when they were a baby by the hand of anyone that looked after them I command those spirits to scatter now and go to the dry places in Jesus mighty name father I rebuke every wind of the spirit of rejection that is blowing over their life and destiny in Jesus mighty name father we cover everything that they have ever lost in your sight and in the sight of men as a result of the operation of rejection in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus father I ask you to release the sufficient grace of acceptance into their life and destiny father in the mighty name of Jesus father every favor that they have lost as a result of rejection father may they reclaim it in the mighty name of Jesus let every mark of rejection in their life be wiped off by the blood of Jesus in Jesus mighty name father break by fire 
selective rejection working against them in the mighty name of Jesus father I renounce on their behalf every inherited spirit of rejection passed down to them through their ancestors in the mighty name of Jesus release their life and destiny from the stronghold of rejection through the fire of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus father every foundational rejection father of their family operating in their life right now and destiny father I declare only what you desire for them I speak the word of God into them right now break and release them now in the mighty name of Jesus father they are of the household of God they are accepted in his beloved therefore every ancestral rejection handed down to them is scattered and destroyed and they are delivered through the power of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus father by your word of fire every spirit of rejection sent to destroy them is hereby destroyed receive in in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, surround them with your wall of fire. Let every spirit of rejection sent to them. Father, may that spirit not be able to cross over this wall of fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every witchcraft coven projecting rejection into their life. Father, I come against you by the power of God. Let them go in Jesus' mighty name let them go in Jesus mighty name I command those spirits begin to leave right now those in the zoom rooms right now I command those spirits begin to go to the dry places right now that's right get a bag right now in Jesus mighty name come out in Jesus mighty name I command you go to the dry places right now right now in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus father we send back to sender every arrow of rejection that has been sent to them father the enemy of their life and destiny father we send back every arrow of rejection in Jesus mighty name father in Jesus mighty name I thank you for deliverance and victory over the spirit of rejection to the power in your name in Jesus mighty name father in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name father right now everything that is left never to return never to return never to return never to return in the mighty name of Jesus everything that is left never to return father we are no longer going to walk accepting rejection father we will be discipled and healed oh God because we are oh God those of you through the blood father we are the beloved you've accepted us in the beloved you are accepted in the beloved you are who God says you are he is the great I am you are the apple of his eye in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus father in Jesus mighty name God I remove every layer from anyone here where fear of failure is keeping them back because of rejection and I command spirits of rejection to leave and go to the dry places from deep, 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 deep down. Father, even before the foundations of the earth, Father, God, I'm asking you to change their garments today. Change their, may they see themselves as accepted in the beloved through the blood of Jesus. And so Father, we break that stronghold and I command, those spirits to leave in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus you are accepted because of the blood because of the blood there's nothing more you can do there's nothing more to add to it whatever words were spoken are going all the way back to the womb the Holy Spirit will take you back not me from in the womb and straight through the nine months, God said, he knits you together in your mother's womb, you are accepted. You were loved and accepted and still are. And in Jesus' mighty name, 
when you were born God already had a purpose and a plan for you and so therefore there's nothing more than you could do but walk in that purpose Father I pray right now for all who are here God I pray in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name Father we mash up the barriers today we mash up those barriers God we were believing a lie that was saying this is how we are but God no longer in Jesus mighty name Father we will not accept that lie Father you have said that you made a way for us and so therefore Father we break by fire every curse of rejection God when you call us to do something we're not doing it out of fear we do it out of you love us you accept us some of us have to repent father bring repentance for when we have rejected ourselves some of you have rejected yourself God says you cannot you cannot reject what he has fearfully and wonderfully made you cannot reject what he has fearfully and wonderfully made even the days when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see God says I made you fearfully and wonderfully I made you every hair on your head is numbered I've counted God says and so accept yourself this has nothing to do with pride and selfie it has to do with your made in his image and likeness and he loves you he loves you he loves you he loves you father open their hearts open their hearts today open their hearts today to receive that love oh God open their hearts today to receive that love there's some you sabotage your situation because in your mind it can mash up anyway it could be relationships it could be anything because guess what it always happens to me because I'm nobody reject that lie right now father where they have believed the lie that they are nothing so all the relationships that they pour into then they do things to cause it to mash up in Jesus mighty name we reject that lie we reject it and I command those spirits begin to leave oh father oh there's an anointing in this place and I need to behave myself but God I'm saying to you here today y'all you're born of God and the evil one cannot touch you they have some of you you're afraid Satan you're frightened you want to sleep at night and you, and you, and you have one eye open and one eye closed listen to me here's what the word says you are born of God and the evil one cannot touch you the word of God says that you may approach God with freedom and confidence so something happened to keep you back you gotta repent but here's what he says you may approach him with freedom and confidence not fear freedom and confidence nothing will keep you away from him do you understand what I'm saying and the word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in your weakness his strength is made perfect on the day when you feel the most tired and the most weak God says my strength is made perfect call on him watch him prove himself 